Hi guys, welcome to the second video in Dollar Revision series and today I'll be focusing on pressure, more so the YouTube manometer and its usage in calculations because uh, this has been in my experience one of the most challenging aspects of pressure, not just understanding the basic foundation but actually being able to apply it to the instrument, one of the instruments that's used and in a lot of physics questions both at the CSEC and the CAPE level, even at the Form 3 level, pressure is introduced uh, through this instrument. So we're going to start with firstly a slight revision on pressure. So pressure is the force acting normally per unit area. We have two units that we can use to establish pressure. They are the Pascal and the Newton per meter squared. Now Newton per meter squared is simply derived from my original formula for pressure. Now, I can consider pressure acting through all states of matter, and it's very easy if you consider pressure acting on a surface, right, like a solid, because it is typically the weight of the body which is applied over whatever base area. And we also established prior that the smaller the surface area, the greater the pressure. So we consider that if you concentrate the force or the weight of the body through a very small base area, you apply a very large pressure. Now, if you consider a fluid, a fluid is a liquid or a gas. And many times in that fluid, you have a pressure generated. Now, the pressure is dependent in a fluid, right, on the density, as well as the height or the depth of the fluid, as well as gravity. So if you go on the moon, where the gravitational field is smaller, you would have a different pressure experienced on the fluid. Now, the reason why I said that the depth is affecting the pressure in a liquid is because the further down you go, there is a greater weight of fluid above you. So because there is a greater weight of fluid above you, you will find that pressure increases with depth. Now, that being said, we consider a device which is used to measure pressure and that is called a YouTube manometer. Now how the device physically looks is that I have a U-shaped glass tube with a uniform cross-sectional area and what happens is I fill it typically with mercury or any liquid of known density. Now initially I will have one side of the tube being exposed to the atmosphere and the other left side arm of the tube being inserted into whatever unknown pressure I want to measure. Now initially the fluid is at a reference level and I have labeled that in my diagram AB. Now when you attach whatever unknown fluid or gas or you know substance you want to measure the pressure of, it forces the liquid to because it's experience on the surface B at level B of the liquid and it forces it now to push level A up to perhaps level C. So that pressure forces the mobility. It causes mobility. It forces the liquid to go from one level A all the way to level C. So after the liquid has risen to that height H, we are considering that to be the pressure difference between the unknown substance and atmospheric pressure. Now, atmospheric pressure is comparative here because you are opening. Anytime any surface is exposed to air, it is not closed, you will have to consider atmospheric pressure. Consider the ocean. You will have air existing on the surface, so therefore you will have atmospheric pressure, which is the pressure of the surrounding air on that surface. So that left, that right side arm is exposed to atmospheric pressure, and because the pressure of the unknown substance is clearly greater than atmospheric pressure, it is going to push the liquid up the right hand arm. So in the same way, if atmospheric pressure were greater, it would have forced the liquid to move in the opposite direction. So in fact, you will find that uh, that uh, formula gives you what your pressure difference is between your substance and atmospheric pressure. And many times you are just asked to find it in a question by applying the formula A through G. So what they can do in an exam is they can give you a calibrated manometer and you will be asked to read off the values of the different levels. So when you do that, you will be able to determine the height and then find the pressure associated. 
So this is a typical question here of a modification of the YouTube manometer and it is one of the harder questions that you can get in an exam. Uh, you will find here that you have a YouTube and it is having three different liquids. So you would have your base which is mercury and then on either side, either limb of your YouTube you have uh, oil and then you have water. Now clearly these substances are at different densities. So if you want to keep filling each arm of your YouTube until you have no further movement of liquid, what that is causing is that you are filling the arms with liquids at different heights until the pressure exerted at X is equal to the pressure at Y. So because they are at different densities, right, you have fluids of different densities, the pressures exerted by each fluid will be the same but at different heights. So you will find now that you would, in the question, oil, you don't know the density and that is what the goal of the question is, to find the density of oil. But you know that the height of oil, which is 0 0.32 meters, is exerting some pressure at X. And that pressure is equal to the pressure due to the water column at Y. And because X and Y are at the same level, we are drawing from a characteristic of liquid pressure. Pressure at the same level is constant. Right? So the pressure at X is equal to the pressure at Y. So now to get the pressure at Y, the pressure due to the column of water, it is equal to H or G. Now in the question, you are told that the density of water is 1000 and the height of the water is 0.25. So I could right away establish that the pressure exerted by the water column is A through G. So I would have solved it. I got 2500. Now, if the question asks you to determine the pressure of oil, you will be assuming that the pressure at X and the pressure at Y, that level is the same. So you will find that the pressure due to the water, which was just calculated to be 2,500 pascals, is the same as the pressure due to the column of oil. So that would have been A through G. So you would have had 0 0.32 by the density of oil by G being equal to 2,500. So I have my 2,500 divided by making rho the subject 0.32 by 10. So the density of oil is 781.25. So from this, you can get questions where you are mixing liquids in either arm of the YouTube. And it's one of the harder questions um, that typically you will find maybe at Cambridge, right? Or any GCE exam. And you will find that if you include the two different substances that you will allow them, so the entire system will be in equilibrium, it will be stationary. So you will find that the pressure due to the column of oil is the same as the pressure due to the column of water. So join me tomorrow for another one of dollar revision videos.